G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, seems the SEC is not done going after, you know, basically shit coins and scams. You know, any ICOs that, you know, really didn't do the right thing back in 2000, 2017, 2018, uh, they're coming after them. And uh, yeah, this is just another one. So basically, uh, start options and Bitcoin to Gen. <laughs> I don't even know how they say that. But Steven Seagal was not so much caught up in it, but he was shilling one of these projects. And the SEC has come after him. And look, there were three different guys uh, that were involved. They're not going after Steven Seagal himself, uh, but they have uh, yeah, basically uh, charged these guys uh, and it's not looking good. And there's Steven Seagal. The earth has music for those who listen. It does, uh, and the law... Uh, has an arm longer than most. <laughs> so I don't know if they'll go after Steven Seagal for this or what may happen, but they have gone after the three sort of people involved, the co-founders uh, and the marketeer. So the SEC, you know, like I agree, you know, anyone who's brought out a shit coin and made all these promises to do this and that and nothing ever eventuated from it, then absolutely, they need to go after those. Uh, you know, the, the SEC... Uh, file against XRP. I mean, it doesn't look good on paper, you know, the things that we saw. But, you know, XRP's been around for a long time. You know, they do have some, you know, sort of business uh, deals going on. So I don't know if I'd call XRP a shit coin, uh, but I definitely would say that I'm not pleased with the way they handled their business uh, if those documents are right. And again, we'll just have to wait and see. But in this regard, I fully support the SEC. We need to go after people who, you know, made these ICOs. And again, they were. They are literally just shit coins. They were complete and utter scams. Uh, they never did any anything. And, you know, the creators, you know, and all the rest of it, they just took the money and then used it for their own, you know, private kind of uh, funds and that. They didn't actually do anything with the coin. So good on the SEC in this regard. Now... Coinbase finally decided they are going to do their uh, IPO uh, and it's going to be done uh, via NASDAQ. So this is interesting. Now I will be looking out for this. I do plan to get into uh, some of these stocks. I don't really buy into stocks all that often, but I think this is one uh, I will likely buy into. I'm just unsure yet whether I want to get in immediately because you know the price may dump significantly after it. Uh, I'll really just have to make my decision and sort of see. I'm, I'm unsure at the moment, uh, and I'm not a massive Coinbase fan, in all fairness. They keep crashing and having all these problems, but I do think they will uh, do quite well in the long run. Uh, you know, a lot of places use uh, Coinbase, and particularly, uh, you know, industry, they go through Coinbase to uh, get a lot of their deals done. So, yeah, keep a look out for that. Now, one of the reasons I'm still bullish on cryptocurrencies, and I did speak about this the other day, but here's a new report. So 22.3 million Bitcoin addresses were active during January. So we can see that, you know, this this isn't just institution. Uh, some of this would be institutional, uh, no doubt, but retail is here and they're starting to really come in. Now, again, it's going to get crazier than this, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Please don't take anything I say as financial advice. I do have to say that every video just to make sure. But I do think this is going to get bigger and more crazier. Bitcoin at the moment uh, is, you know, kind of tracking downwards. Uh, and I do think this could last a little while longer. But it is going to stop at some stage. And then Bitcoin will have built up enough momentum that when people do start to buy in and, you know, not enough people are selling, the selling uh, is getting completely outweighed by the buying. At the moment, it's kind of even sort of 50-50, hence why we're trading sort of sideways. Once that stops, uh, Bitcoin is going to pump really, really hard. And we'll get to the charts and have a look. But this is why I'm bullish on Bitcoin. And I do think we can go down lower some, but I don't think we're too far away from a big move upwards. Now, US uh, Federal Reserve, uh, they're actually trying to uh, get a... They've advertised for a position uh, looking at stable coins and that. So this is interesting. Obviously, the US is moving ahead with their digital dollar. Now, the US Federal Reserve has posted a job advertisement that seeks to hire a role related to stable coins and central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs. The Fed is looking for a research manager to join its team to assess the benefits and risks of digital assets. 
the Federal Reserve Board expects the selected candidate to manage the Digital Innovation Policy Program. The department oversees all aspects of a program focused on emerging issues at the intersection of technology and payments. Uh, so, you know, it just goes to show that they've, you know, they're not all that far kind of lagging behind China, although China sort of does have a semi first move uh, advantage. But look, I think once they do this, because they have to do a report now, they can't just simply make a decision. They'll do a report and have it all looked at. I really do think they'll probably go with something like USDC. It's already regulated. Uh, you know, it, it, it's a coin that works, so there's no issues there. It is really just kind of the Ethereum, Ethereum fees and all the rest of it that is going to be an issue. But look, USDC is not just on Ethereum. Uh, it's on other blockchains uh, and other blockchains that work fast. Stellar, I think Algorand, uh, it's on those two. Uh, and no doubt it'll be on others, you know, probably Cardano, uh, things like that. So really, I think that's probably the way the US will go. Why spend all this money to try and create this coin when they already have one there that works? That technology just needs you know, some kind of tweaking here and there uh, and it shouldn't have any issues. It's been used uh, for quite some time already in a worldwide kind of uh, basis. It's not like USDC is only available uh, in the US. Everyone around uh, the world who's into crypto uses it. So that's my gut feeling. Now, this is what I was talking about. So, sell order, soaring sell orders contrast sharply with Bitcoin's renewed bull run. So, we have sell orders and buy orders that are kind of evening out a little bit. I mean, more so the sell orders, but that is going to start to dry up eventually. And that's just the way all markets work. It sell off for a while, and eventually it gets to a price where more people go, yes, this is a good price, now is when I want to buy in. And at the moment, again, the sell orders are just outweighing the buy orders a little bit, but eventually that will stop and the buy orders will just start to overwhelm the sell orders and then we will have our big next move. And I do see that coming fairly soon. But again, I could be wrong. We'll just wait and see. But let's go down here. While the international press coverage of Bitcoin's rally has caused a, sw a, a swath of new users to flock to the industry and buy in, outflows have been equally significant. Of the total amounts of cryptocurrency sold in the last six months, half of it nearly, 43%, was off-ramped in December alone. So that's just people taking profits. Completely understandable. If you bought Bitcoin at, I don't know, you were lucky enough to buy it at four or $5,000 and it made it to $40,000, you've basically 10xed your money. Of course people were going to sell. It's not everyone that's selling. Like I haven't sold any Bitcoin. Well, that's not true. I did sell a very tiny bit of Bitcoin. I took some cash profits at around about 40,000 uh, and I bought back in at around about 33,000. But it was a very small amount, like very small. I sold off a little bit more uh, Ethereum and some of my altcoins and I really did sell any Bitcoin. Uh, and I used those profits to buy more Bitcoin than what I sold. So I was just lucky that worked out well. Uh, I, I did get the feeling like 40 uh, was having a trouble, bit of trouble getting through. So yeah, I took some profits. And again, so I've upped my amount of Bitcoin, not by a lot, uh, but I definitely did uh, increase the amount of Bitcoin I had. Now again, so 43% of you know that Bitcoin was sold in December. So again, it was just people taking profits. And you know, it's also part of people taking profits, plus the miners are just constantly selling. So that's really what has pushed the price of uh, Bitcoin down. But eventually people are going to be like, oh, well, I don't want to sell anymore. I'm not happy to sell at 30,000. Uh, I, I want to sell at, you know, 60,000 or whatever. And then all you're going to have is, uh, you know, maybe some whales selling some if they think now's a good time to stay a bit liquid. Uh, and the miners selling some because they always have to mine but the buying pressure just will probably, you know, start to increase. Again, people will be looking and going, you know what, Bitcoin was at, you know, $42,000, you know, about a month ago. Uh, and, you know, everyone's going to make their own decision, but they'll probably go, you know what, I think 30000 or 32000 or maybe even 34000 is a pretty good buy. And so then it will start to build up and it'll just be outweighed and the price is, you know, in my opinion, going to go higher. But again, not financial advice. We'll have to wait and see. All right, let's have a look at the ETH chart. So this is on the daily against the USD. So have a look at this. This is starting to coil 
and I do think we're going to have a big move upwards. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen. And I mean, according to this, you know, that could push out to the 21st of Feb. So that's, you know, sort of three-ish weeks away. But look, it doesn't mean it has to go right to there. It definitely could break out earlier. But I think we might bounce off this, come down, form another low, whether it comes down and, you know, touches this red or not. But I think it's going to probably come down and start to pump up again, probably somewhere around here. So I'm going to say 8th of February. Uh, and again, I think it'll be fairly similar to Bitcoin. So I think within the next week or so, we're likely to see both of them break out. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Ethereum first, but we'll just have to wait and see. There's no guarantees in life. It absolutely could break to the downside. So again, that's why we got the red down here. If it breaks down below here, that's bearish. Uh, if it breaks above here, above the green, then it's bullish uh, in the green. But what we might have is a bit of a fake out. So we'll have a candle that closes above. And the very next day, we'll have a candle that closes below. Again, just to wreck some shorts and longs and all the rest of it. That's what these things happen. Uh, and then we travel down a little bit. And then again, like I said, maybe around the 8th of February, we start to break out and we see another big pump. Look, we can go to Bitcoin. And we see something similar kind of going on. Uh, we have a bit of a descending triangle here. So this is uh, just a... Oh, I forget what the name of this triangle is, but it's sideways. The triangles where it's more likely to break down are the ones that are kind of triangling up. They usually break down. Anything that's kind of sideways like this or even downwards, as long as it's in a bull market and not a, uh, a bear market, they generally break to the upside. And again, this is perfectly uh, perpendicular sort of here. Uh, and again, we have this so flat line here, rising line here chances are this is probably going to break to the upside but again no guarantees in life we'll have to wait and see that's ETH let's have a look at Bitcoin uh, same sort of thing the lows are getting higher uh, and this is on a decline this time but it's still forming that wedging pattern and it's not a wedging pattern going up wedging patterns going up generally break down even in bull markets uh, but uh, anything that's kind of sideways or going down in bull markets will generally break to the top so again, I, I think this might sort of roll over a bit. Uh, and then again, we start to come up around about the 8th of sort of February. So in a week's time. Now it could happen before, could happen a little bit after. Again, this one gets out to close to the same time as the Ethereum one. So maybe it's around about sort of the 21st uh, of February before we see a true move out. But again, I just get the feeling like it's going to be more around this 8th of February within the next week or so. Could be a few days after, could be a few days before. I think we're going to break out. I think the buying exuberance uh, is uh, just, it, it hasn't stopped. Uh, you know, but people are still buying it, but I think the sell pressure, people are just going to be like, again, you know, anyone who's kind of already sold has got their profits and they probably don't want to sell anymore. It's really just the miners who are kind of selling now at the moment. Uh, and as more and more people start to get in, you know, maybe Wall Street bets and all the rest of it come over. I think the buying pressure will outweigh the selling pressure and Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, and all altcoins are going to make some uh, really big moves. Although I do think the... The smaller alts, once Bitcoin makes a move, will probably start to bleed off a bit. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Last but not least, let's go over here. All right, so this is a little bit old. We will have to refresh. So again, we're still over a trillion though. That's really, really good. And again, Bitcoin at 34,000 says, uh, and we have it back there. All right, let's refresh and see what's happening. All right, so Bitcoin still at 34. Uh, we got a couple of billion dollars there. I think that was 1 trillion uh, and 39 billion. So we added 3 billion in the last sort of, you know, 20 minutes, uh, 40 minutes or so. Bitcoin dominance. So now it's down to 60%. It continues to drop. ETH dominance is growing. I mean, look at the look at the ETH gas prices at the moment. You you know, unless you're making a lot of money, uh, sorry, unless you're worth a lot of money, you can't do anything with Ethereum at the moment. I'm not even bothering trying to collect my uh, Kyber Network uh, rewards. Uh, the, the fees just completely uh, outweighed at the moment. Uh, and so that's really disappointing. Like, uh, again, uh, I'm not rich. Uh, I'm not poor either, but I can't afford to pay those kind of gas prices. That You know, that's 50 bucks uh, per transaction. I just, I don't have enough 
coins to justify that. It, it actually starts to eat into uh, the initial that I have, so I just can't do it. For me, it has to be you know under kind of 50 or 20 for me to even kind of think about it. Anything above that, I just can't do it. So again, you know, these layer two solutions and ETH 2.0 itself, it just can't come quick enough. All right, let's have a look though. What's what's moved? You know, in the last 24 hours, what are our big movers? Funfair. Uh, I remember this coin from a long time ago, but haven't sort of heard of it in a while. But boom, look at that. So again, you know, it's the smaller alts at the moment that are doing really, really well. Uh, things like Bitcoin and Ethereum just ranging sideways, and even some of the bigger, uh, you know, top 20 altcoins not you know, doing amazingly. They're just kind of traveling sideways. It really is the mid to low caps at the moment where all the big gains are sort of coming from. But look, in saying that, there we go, Cardano, that's number six. Uh, it's had quite a good week. You know, Gogan's coming out soon and things like that, so not too bad. But you can see most of these are sort of outside the top 20 at set for six. Uh, and then again, yeah, look, you know, things outside the 20, other than NEM, you know, uh, just making the top 20, other things that are doing well, and particularly things that, you know, even, you know, you go outside of the top 100, they're pumping well. But what about losses? What about losses? Are there any big losses? I'm going to say they're probably going to be. I haven't looked, but there we go. XRP, uh, you know, I just, I had a suspicion there were tweets saying it was going to be a pump and dump. I really want XRP to do well. Uh, but I just can't see it doing well, you know, with this whole SEC lawsuit at the moment. So I did think this was going to be a pump and dump and I didn't touch it. And, you know, hopefully no one, uh, you know, got burnt by it. Although, you know, people would have had to have. It's unlikely that, you know, this this is all people who knew it was coming. People would have got scorched. And Doge, again, of course it was going to pull back. That's not to say it doesn't have any more legs. Just a bit of a healthy retracement. Uh, you know, the graph, again, th look at that. It's still up 40% for the week, so an 8% pullback. Uh, you know, no one's going to uh, be too upset with that unless they literally bought at the top and now are 8% down. Then yes, that's going to hurt. But again, if you know the cycles, you know, and you understand where we are in the market cycle, you know, generally, not financial advice, just my personal opinion. If you're in a good project, just hold. You know, in a month, two months, three months, six months time. It's probably, not guaranteed though, there's no guarantees in life, probably going to be worth a whole lot more. Uh, but again, that's the good projects. Shit projects can still go up and do, do well, but they just don't have any long-term fundamentals behind them. They're nothing but hype. And if you've got something that's you know nothing but hype, you know, <laughs> consider taking some profits. But look, these losses, other than XRP... Dogecoin's not too bad. I could handle losing 14% if I'd made 300%. Uh, the graph, again, I can handle losing 8.5% if I've made 40% for the week. So these are very small losses. There's some big gains in there and really small losses. All right, I'd love to know uh, down below, are you planning to get into the Coinbase IPO? Do you believe uh, in any stocks or do you have a combination of you know stocks, cryptos, precious metals, things like that? I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, I don't have too many stocks at all anymore. Uh, I, I just I, I couldn't see the upside to them, uh, and they're an inflated market in my personal opinion. But I am slowly but surely sort of getting back into some stocks. Uh, you know, I like Tesla. I think they've got a big future. Are they overpriced? Yeah, you know, could be. Uh, but still, long term, uh, I, th I think they'll do great. Uh, and I think Coinbase will probably do well as well. So for stocks, there are some that I like and will probably sort of, you know, get some more. But th there really isn't too many. Uh, I'm not going to go out of my way to invest in too many things in the stock market at the moment. I just don't like it. I'd rather, you know, we're still waiting for gold to do something. Silver's finally making a move. Uh, you know, I, I sold all my positions in gold and silver but uh, I use the uh, Bamboo uh, investment app uh, and that invests in gold and silver for me. So they're not actual sort of shares, it's more the paper shares, but still that's been doing really well. And if you go down below to my description, uh, there'll be a link to the Bamboo app there if you want to get in it. Uh, so yeah, love to know your thoughts. Are you going to get into the Coinbase IPO? Uh, and do you like shares at all or are you just 100% legit crypto? <laughs> all right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train and I'll see you next time.